Okay, in the interest of time, we will go ahead and get started. And, um, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Felicia LaFrance. I'm an education manager with Aware Super. And with me today are my fantastic co stars, Julianne Coleman and Christine Power. They are also education managers. Julianne is in our Newcastle region, and Christine is in um, our Melbourne office. So they're going to be behind the scenes today answering any questions. So if you do have questions, please use the QA button at the bottom of the screen. We're not going to be monitoring the raise hands function or the chat function, uh, so please put all questions through the Q&A and we will endeavor to answer them as we go through. Now, uh, Julianne is going to be providing you some useful links in the chat function that you can click on um, and access, um, but all questions, um, have them go through the Q&A so that we can have a record of them and, and keep track. So with that, I um, also want to mention that your mics and your cameras have been muted just to make sure that this is uh, a distraction-free uh, webinar, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So the superannuation um, and Centerlink rules are complex to navigate, and we can't cover all the ins and outs in this session. So my objective is just to outline an approach to retirement plan and to provide you with some key concepts of the superannuation and Centerlink rules as they relate to retirement. And I'll also give you some food for thought about your own lifestyle in retirement, and then we'll provide you with some tools and references for further support available so you can continue your personal retirement plan. We would first like to do an acknowledgement of country. We want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting and we pay respect to our elders, their elders past, present and emerging, as well as to any elders from other communities who may be here today. Now, just before we get started, we just want to let you know that today's presentation is factual, but it is general in nature. So um, we are not financial planners. We are only um, authorized to give general advice, which is what this webinar is. So we're going to give you some facts and figures. Um, it's more about what you could do, not what you should do. Um, so if you do need some more personal financial um, help, we do have that available. We will provide you with a link in the chat function to be able to request that support. And with anything, an informed decision is a better decision. So we encourage you to read any product disclosure statements as well as any relevant fact sheets on our website before you make any big financial decisions. We would also like to take this opportunity to um, thank the PSA and the Women's Council for today's presentation. We understand that you had a recent survey where you stated that superannuation is very important to you, and I really applaud your interest in that. Um, as today's session is brief, our senior partnership manager, Jody Hayden, will work with the PSA to get more webinars available to you. But in the meantime, we have some public webinars that go into more depth, and you can uh, register for those on our website. Also, um, if you would like face-to-face -face seminars in your workplace, please speak with your PSA organizer and we can arrange to come out to support you in person in the new year. Now, this is what we're going to cover in this brief session. We're going to talk um, just quickly about the challenges that women face, talk about uh, thinking about retirement and some of the questions that we should be asking ourselves before we um, start to um, come up with our retirement plan. Then we will discuss how super works and how we can top that up and then accessing that money that we've um, put into our super. And then we'll talk about Centerlink and government support and then how we can help. Now, women face some very significant um, challenges compared to um, men. And on average, we know that Australian women retire with 42% less superannuation than men. And we also receive a third of the government tax concessions for superannuation as these are overwhelmingly enjoyed by higher income earners. And 44% of women rely on a partner's income as the main way to fund the retirement. What I think is um, upsetting is that currently 40% of older single retired Australian women live in poverty and experience economic insecurities. And most concerning in, is in fact that women over the age of 55 are the fastest growing group for homelessness in Australia. 
Now, this is not the economic security that we want for ourselves, our mothers, our daughters, our friends, and we all have a role to play in helping to respond to this significant challenge um, facing our society because it is a societal challenge and not just a women's issue. It has a flow on effect. And this is why it's so important that we get this information so that we can start to lift ourselves from these economic insecurities as much as possible through awareness and financial literacy. So thinking about retirement. The first question that most people have when they're considering retirement is whether it is affordable. Will I have enough income to support myself in retirement? To successfully plan for retirement, we need to get a clear picture of how long our money is going to last. So we need a couple of inputs to make this projection. My lifestyle in retirement. What kind of lifestyle do I want and how much income will I need? Now, this is a question that requires you to envision what sort of life you want to be living once you're no longer working. Because retirement planning isn't just about survival, it's about freedom. Uh, freedom um, such as the ability to take trips and dine out later in life is all very contingent on the planning that you do today. And it's important to answer, um, in order to answer this, we have to keep track of what our current expenses are to gauge how much it's going to cost us to live a comfortable lifestyle. Now, where will my income come from? So the sources of our retirement income can come from many things such as the age pension, part-time work, income that we generate on our savings like interest, dividends, rental income, and super, which is the capital that we'll draw down on. As for how long it will last, it can depend on many things like how many years we are likely to be retired. For many of us, this can be 20 to 30 years as we are healthier than decades past and our life expectancies are longer. And women can expect to live on average anywhere from three to five years longer than our male counterparts. Another question to ask is when do you plan to finish work and how much will you spend once you're retired? How are you invested long term? And how much are you going to need to save before you retire? And when can I retire? Again, these questions depend on your plans for retirement and the sorts of things that you would like to do once you've retired. You need to ask yourself questions like, are you going to be taking holidays within Australia or internationally? Do you want to dine out often or stay in? Are you planning on home renovations or do you plan on giving money to your kids? So all of these things are important to consider when you're determining how much you're going to need to retire with. Using a super projections calculator can be very helpful in determining how long your money can last. Once you have a clear picture of that, then you can start making some informed decisions. Most of us daydream about the day that we're finally going to finish work and retire. So whether those dreams are cruising around the world, camper vanning around Australia, or just you know, pottering around in your garden or even improving your golf game. The magic question is, how do we make our retirement dreams a reality? So let's look at what the Australian retirement standard looks like. So the ASPA Retirement Standard, which is the Australian Super Funds Association, they benchmark the annual budget needed by Australians to fund either a comfortable or a modest standard of living in the post-work years. It is updated quarterly to reflect inflation and it provides detailed budgets of what singles and couples would need to spend to support their chosen lifestyle. Now, ASPA's comfortable standard estimates how much money is needed for retirees to be involved in a range of leisure activities to have a good standard of living, which includes things like private health insurance, a reasonable car, electrical and household goods, and holidays. The ASPA's modest standard estimates how much money is needed for the basic costs of living. Both of these standards apply for people retiring at age 65 who will live to an average life expectancy of about 85, and they assume that you own your own home and are relatively healthy. Now for a couple, you can see that 640,000 is needed for an annual income of about 61,786, and for a modest lifestyle, that is 70,000. And the reason that seems so low is because most of that income under a modest lifestyle would be coming from the age pension. 
Now, although the ASFA standards are a useful guide, if you are used to living off of an above average income, you may instead want to assume that you'll need around 67% of your pre-retirement gross income to maintain a comparable lifestyle. And this is why it's important to budget to see how much you could be spending in retirement. Now, whether you agree with these or not, it's really just a guide to give you some um, information about what the Australian standards are. Um, I know that we can provide you with the link in the chat function to those retirement standards. It's quite an interesting read. Now for most people, super is going to play an important role in making the most of their savings in retirement. Super can help you enjoy your retired days by allowing you to maintain a good standard of living which isn't achievable by receiving just the age pension alone. Super is essentially just a concessionally tax saving structure. It does have a lot of rules and restrictions that we need to navigate. Um, there's rules to get your money in and rules to uh, access your money and of course limits on how much you can transfer into the retirement phase. So we need to have an understanding of the rules to make informed decisions so that we pay the least amount of tax and in doing so make the most of the money that we have. So when it comes to your super, adding a little extra now could make a big difference later. Um, every little bit really can help when you're saving for a retirement that you'll love. Um, and you might think that super is already being taken care of. Um, after all, your employer's compulsory superannuation guarantee con you know, contributions are all about that, right? But these contributions alone often are not enough to achieve the retirement lifestyle that people want to live. So we'll take you through some of the different ways to give you your super a boost. So there are two types of contributions, the before tax concessional contribution and the after tax non-concessional contribution. The before tax concessional contribution is the most popular because of the tax um, treatment on this. So money is taken pre-tax from your salary and put into super and it's taxed at 15%. Now for the average Australian who sits in the 34.5% tax bracket, this means that you're saving 19.5% on that contribution that you've made into super. So you can see why this is so popular in being able to grow your nest egg and save um, a, your uh, tax during that year that you're contributing. So the things that comprise the concessional contributions are salary sacrifice, your employer's contributions, which is that current 9.5% minimum, and any personal deductible contributions. So that's a personal contribution you've made that you claim a tax deduction um, later. All three of those are considered uh, before tax concessional contributions and that limit is $25,000 per person per financial year. So what this means is we take that 9.5% from that 25,000 and what is left is what we are able to put in personally into superannuation. Now they introduced a piece of legislation back um, for July from July 1st, um, 2018 that states that if your balance is under 500,000, you are able to use any unused portion of your contribution cap from the previous financial year and in the current financial year to be able to top up your super and get that tax savings. Um, now whether that's right for you or not, that's something that um, we can give you advice about, um, but we also have some information on our website about that as well. The after-tax non-concessional contribution is money that's taken from your net pay. So you've already paid your marginal tax rate on that. And you can see that the amount is much higher at $100,000 per annum. Now, if you are under the age of 65, you're able to put a bit more in. You can bring forward three years worth of contributions in one year without having to pay any excess contributions tax. That rule does cut out at 65 and you would no longer be able to use that bring forward rule. But these are both excellent ways to be able to get money into super. Um, so we have to be mindful of the caps because um, if you go over one of the caps, you could end up paying more tax in your contributions. So it's important to know what they are and how they work. Now, one of the questions that we get a lot um, is, where do I start? How do I even know how much more to put into super? And the biggest thing that we tell them is to run a super health check. So you can find out how much super you have by logging into your online member portal or 
the downloading the mobile app and creating an account um, and registering for an online account and being able to track all of your um, things that you would do even on the member online portal. Once you establish um, this uh, account, then you can use something called the super projections calculator and it estimates how much super you could have in retirement. So you add in some information like age, wage, super balance. It asks you some a uh, few more questions to get a clearer picture and then it estimates how much you could have per year uh, in retirement and how long that will last. So it's a really useful tool because it also gives you the um, average Australian standards and lets you know if you're close to meet your on track for meeting your goal, you'll be in excess of your goal or if you're in a shortfall. Now, if you are in a shortfall, you're able to go back into the calculator and change some information so that it recalculates and lets you know how much closer you are to your retirement goal. It's a really excellent tool. I use it every year to make sure I'm still on track and it's a good way to start if you don't know exactly where to start. Um, so I would encourage you, anybody is able to use this calculator, it's on aware.com.au. I'm sure Julianne's providing the link in the chat function. Um, have a go, you can even include your partner's information if you want, just to have a better idea of um, what kind of retirement you're looking at. Now we've covered the options to get your money into super, so let's discuss the super rules as they relate to accessing your super. So preservation age is an important concept in relation to accessing your super. And this is determined by your date of birth. So to find your preservation age, you find the row that your date of birth falls within and across the right is your preservation age. Now this only relates to the age at which you can meet a condition of release to access your preserved amounts in super. It will be different to the age you're entitled to the age pension, which I'll cover later in another slide. Now, um, generally both um, you, your Super remains preserved um, unless it's uh, death or severe financial hardship or permanent incapacity. Other than that, once we reach preservation age, we have to fully retire from the workforce to get access, or if we are between the ages of 60 and 64 and we cease an employment arrangement, we can get access. Um, or if you have attained the age of 65, you can access your super um, even if you're still working. So regardless of working status at age 65, everything becomes unpreserved. Now another way to access your super before retirement is through a transition retirement income stream. So this is an account that is set up once you reach your preservation age and it's um, available to people who are still working, but still they may want to transition out of the workforce, so they need to access some of their funds to make up for the time that they're missing out of work. So it is um, taxed just like your super fund, so any earnings are taxed at 15%, so no different than your accumulation account, and they have to pay you an amount between four and 10% um, of your account balance every financial year. But it could be an excellent way to not only ease yourself out of the workforce and keep that income coming up, but it could be a way to save tax in the lead up to retirement. So if you do need more information about that, you can um, absolutely request that. Now we'll just briefly talk about Centerlink and government support. So this is going to be another source of income for many retirees in retirement. Um, and Centerlink uses um, some criteria to determine eligibility, such as reaching the age pension age, and then an assets and an income test. So in order to be eligible for um, Centerlink for the first time, you have to have reached the eligibility age. Um, and this is different than the preservation age for super. So anyone born before July 1st, 1952, your age, eligibility age is 65. And anyone born after January 1st, 1957, your eligibility age is 67. Um, this is the first test that um, you have to apply for before you are given the other tests. So the first test they're gonna give you is the assets test. Now, simply put, they're going to add up the value of all of your stuff. Um, home contents, cars, boats, caravans, all valued at sale value. All your financial um, assets are valued at current value. Investment properties are valued at rates notice. They don't include your primary residence and up to two hectares of land around it. 
Now it's worth noting that couples are assessed as a couple for all combined assets, even if one partner is under the age pension age, except for the super accum um, accumulation accounts in that younger spouse's name. Those are not assessed until your partner is old enough for the age pension. So if as a couple, your assets are under 401,500, you would be entitled to the full age pension. If your assets are over that, then you could garner a part age pension, whereby if your assets reach over 876,500, you would be disqualified from receiving, um, receiving an age pension. Um, Non-homeowners have a higher limit because they're not um, accounting for the uh, family home. Once you pass the assets test, then they're gonna give you an income test. Centerlink is going to assess your and your partner's income from all sources, which includes financial assets such as superannuation. So to work out how much income your financial assets produce, they use something called deeming. So financial investments, including term deposits, shares, and managed funds are all assumed to be earning a certain rate of income, no matter what they're actually earning. Other types of income, such as property rental or salary from employment, as well as um, anything overseas that you're getting is also going to be assessed. Um, or the first 88,000 for a couple is deemed at 0.25%, and anything over that is deemed at 2.25%. For those who have reached the age pension age but continue to work, the work bonus may uh, mean that you still qualify for a part or even a full age pension depending on your income. So under this work bonus, the first $300 of fortnightly income derived from employment is excluded under that income test. So that means a pensioner can now earn $300 from employment and $174 from other income before their pension payments are reduced. Um, now, if you exceed the fortnightly income limit, um, that will see the pension reduced by 50 cents for every dollar over the limit until you reach the disqualifying limit for a part age pension, at which point your age pension payment will cease. Now, both of these tests will be given. Whichever one produces the least amount, that's the amount they're going to use. Now, even if you don't qualify for an age pension right when you apply for it, doesn't mean that you'll never be eligible for an age pension. As your assets um, are um, going down and your income becomes less, then you're always welcome to apply again for the age pension because um, you could apply you could be eligible for that. But even if you're not entitled to the age pension, you could be entitled to concession cards. The senior's card is if you're over 60 and you work less than 20 hours per week, you can get a senior's card, which gives you discounts to a range of commercial businesses and some public services. The Commonwealth Senior Health Card helps with the cost of prescription medicines and other health services if you are of age pension age, but you don't qualify for an age pension. They have more information about those on australia.gov.au. So this is how you can receive assistance from us on the things that we have covered today. Now it's never too early to start planning for your retirement. I always think of this as planning for my future self. So even though I still have 20 years left before I retire, I am thinking of 65 year old me, um, who's going to be very grateful that younger me started making some plans because I certainly don't wanna to have to worry about it too much when I'm older. Um, you can book an appointment with a financial planner, even simple advice that can cover things like what investment should I be in? Um, what, how much contributions should I be putting in? Um, is an income stream right for me? All of those things can be done over the phone by our simple advice team, and there's at no extra cost for our members. Um, so it's a really, really um, handy way to get some advice and some peace of mind. If you do need something more complex, so you want to discuss your partner's information as well, you wanna talk about reducing debt or um, uh, reducing tax, or just getting a roadmap to retirement and get that peace of mind, you're welcome to see a financial planner that can come up with a more comprehensive plan for you. And they do let you know um, how everything goes at that first meeting. Um, and if a um, plan is needed, they will provide that in writing. A fee, of course, will apply, but they'll let you know ahead of time what that is um, before you um, agree to anything. Now. I did mention that we do do workplace seminars, um, but as 
Um, Jody Hayden will be working with the PSA um, organizers to be able to get some more sessions in. We would encourage you to pick up some of our public webinars, um, such as planning for retirement or even retire ready lifestyle or retire ready finance that go into um, a more in-depth look at um, how we fund our retirement. Um, you may also be um, interested in our investing in uncertain times, which goes um, talks more about how um, the markets work. So all of these are available and um, can be a benefit to our members um, because we're here for you every step of the way. Um, so the links are available in the chat function. Um, click on those and we're more than happy to get back in touch with you um, to help you um, with planning for your retirement.